Hi, my name is Benjamin Reynolds. In this video, we'll be looking at expanding the visibility of signal tap data using RTL simulators. First, we're going to look at the advantages of simulator aware signal tap to understand why a user would want to use this feature. Then, we'll walk through the new simulator aware signal tap flow. And finally, we'll see a quick demonstration of using simulator aware signal tap with Mentor's Quest to Sim simulator. By using Simulator Aware Signal Tap, users can maximize visibility into their design with minimal debug resources. This means users will be able to minimize the amount of nodes they need to tap in the hardware to have maximum visibility into their design instances. Additionally, the new Simulator Aware Node Finder eliminates guesswork for the user by providing tool assisted node selection. And once the user has captured their hardware data, they get to leverage the power of their preferred RTL simulator for their debug iterations. To accomplish this, users will be expected to go through a new SignalTap debug flow. First, users will utilize the Simulator Aware Node Finder to select a minimized set of nodes for the design instances they want to debug. Users can then configure the SignalTap instance, compile the design, and capture hardware data just as they always have. Once hardware data has been captured in SignalTap, users will generate a test bench and data file. This test bench and data file will be used to load the captured SignalTap data into the RTL simulator. Once data has been loaded into the RTL simulator, users will have expanded visibility into their design instance and can proceed with debugging. Let's now walk through a quick demonstration. To get started with running Simulator Aware Signal Tap, we first need our design to have successfully run analysis and synthesis. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll be using the Intel FPGA 40 gigabit Ethernet example design that's generated from within Cordis. And we're going to assume that we want to debug the the data packets that are being sent to the IP. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up Signal Tap. We can use any template we want, but for now I'm just going to proceed with the blank template. Once Signal Tap is open, uh, instead of adding individual nodes, we're going to right click and select Add Simulator Aware Nodes. This is going to bring up the new Simulator Aware Node Finder tool. Here, instead of selecting individual nodes, we'll actually be selecting instances from our design hierarchy. And we can click here, and like I mentioned earlier, I want to debug the packets that are being sent to the IP. So I'm going to navigate through the design instance, and I'm going to select the packet generator here. The first thing we'll notice is that the tool automatically identifies the relevant clock domain for the logic that's inside the instance we selected. Here, only one clock is identified, but if we end up having multiple clocks, a new signal tap instance will be created for each clock. We can then press the search button, and we'll be provided a list of what we call key registers. This is essentially the minimum set of nodes that the tool needs for us to tap for us to be able to get full visibility into the instance. This is not a list of all the nodes in the instance, but a minimized list that will allow us to be able to determine the behavior of the rest of the nodes based on the RTL netlist. We'll insert these into our design, and you'll see a pop-up that's telling us that the acquisition clock for this instance has been set. Simply press OK. We can now set up our signal tap instance in any way that we want, just as we always have. For this demonstration, I'm going to select the TX packet gen enable and catch it on a rising edge to be able to capture a transaction. Once we finish setting this up, we can go ahead and save. Select yes. And we now need to start a compilation. Now that we have the hardware data captured, we want to navigate on over to File, and then we're going to select Create Simulation Test Bench. 
This is going to bring up a settings box that will allow you to make a few different changes before you generate the files, but are intended to work for you as default. If you'd like more information about this settings box, you can navigate to the Intel Cordis Prime debug manual. We're just going to go ahead and select OK. This log file is going to pop up. It's going to provide you with notes on the file generation for each of the simulators. Once we've generated the files, we can go to our project directory. We'll find here the test bench, the data file, and folders for each of the different simulators. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to be using Mentor's Quest to Sim. The first thing we're going to do is navigate to the Mentor folder. Then we're going to source the simulation setup script. You'll see for each of the different simulation scripts, once you've sourced the setup script, you'll be provided commands as well as different variables that you can set for the simulation. For our debug purposes, we're curious about using LD debug. So we'll go ahead and type LD debug. Once our design is loaded, you can navigate through the design hierarchy to find specific nodes that you're looking for, or you can simply add all of them to the waveform if you want to do it that way. The key thing to note here is that you'll have access to many, many more nodes in the RTL simulator than you tapped in hardware. This should prevent you from needing to go back and recompile your design to add more visibility or more nodes into your hardware captured data. From here, it's as simple as doing simulate, run, run all. If we go back to the waveform viewer, all we need to do is zoom out and then you're ready to debug as needed. In summary, by utilizing this new signal tap flow, users will have reduced guesswork when choosing nodes through the simulator aware node finder. They will be able to minimize signal tap resources while maintaining full visibility into their design instances. And overall, users should be able to reduce the number of compilation iteration cycles they need to go through during a signal tap debug flow.